Ever wanted to use WinDebug with .NET Core? Let me show you how. I've made several videos on this channel showing .NET framework debugging using WinDebug. So for a change, let's use .NET Core. .NET Core debugging is not so different than .NET Framework debugging for programmers that use WinDebug. Microsoft has ensured that the tools in WinDebug that are present for .NET Framework are also present for .NET Core. So let's start by using the .NET dump command and the .NET SOS tool. Let me switch really quick to a remote machine that has a .NET application. So I have written this program in C Sharp. Uh, it's just two lines, it's a hello world application. And we will use this as a sample to use WinDebug with .NET Core. The first tool we are gonna use is .NET Dump. .NET Dump is a tool to capture a memory dump from a running .NET Core application. So let's go ahead and install this tool and then use it. Installing the tool is pretty simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open a PowerShell window over here. And I'm just going to run the command .NET tool install. I'm going to put it global because I want to use it multiple times. But if you don't put the minus minus global, it will install the tool into your project. Just install it globally. It's, it's a very handy tool. And the name of the tool .NET dump. So if I run this command, it's going to say that it's already installed on my computer. But the first time you run it, it's going to download the tool and install it into your computer. I am not sure if you can install this tool if you are not an administrator, so definitely be ready to elevate to an administrator if the tool requests that for installation. Next, I'm going to run my application so that I can capture a memory dump. I am going to use C Sharp 6, but you can use any other version of C Sharp that runs on the .NET Core. Okay, let me open another PowerShell window over here. So I'm just going to run my application via .NET Run. The .NET tool is able to figure out from the CS project file that um, my project is actually a .NET Core application and it's able to figure out all the commands that are needed. So .NET run is all I need. And it's going to say hello world because that's what I put my write line. And it's going to stop because I put a read line. This means that now I can capture a memory dump at this position where it is waiting for me to type something into the prompt. To capture a dump, I just use the .NET dump tool. Use the tool like this. First, run .NET dump ps. What that does is that it shows a list of processors in which I can look at the first number, which is the process ID. This is the PID of all the processors that are running in the .NET Core CLR. To collect a dump, what I do is I run .NET dump collect. This is to capture the memory dump. They call it collect. Then I put minus P, I put the number in the front, which is the PID, space, minus O, space, and I give it a name. I'm going to put dump1.dmp. What this does is that it will tell the tool to go and capture the memory dump and write it to disk as dump1.dmp. Now, the .NET dump tool can actually analyze memory dumps. It's not as full featured as WinDebug, but it's worth a try just to learn how it works. So what you do is you run .NET dump, analyze, and then you give it the name of the dump that you want to analyze. And it will start a, a debugger and it will attach it to this uh, memory dump. Now this debugger only has a subset of commands. You can run dump heap, that works. You can run lm. You can run a lot of commands, but what you can't do is you can't use the all-powerful analyze. It does not exist in this debugger because this debugger is not actually a full win debug. It's a mini CLR debugger that Microsoft provides for quick analysis. You can use it. I don't like to use it, so I'll use WinDebug and load the SOS plugin instead so that I have all the commands of this debugger, but I can do more debugging and I can use the analyze command. Let's just start WinDebug and load the memory dump like we normally do. So I'm just starting up WinDebug and I'm just going to choose file and I'm just going to open the memory dump over here. It's already in the list. So if I open the memory dump, 
uh, what I get is that the memory dump is a 64-bit memory dump because all .NET Core CLR applications run at 64-bit unless specified otherwise. So I did not specify otherwise. So it's going to run at 64-bit. And I have access to the analyze command. Now, there's one difference though. When we load the SOS plugin, we usually load it from the same directory as the CLR. But if I run LM, I will see that there is no CLR, but there is a core CLR over here. If I click on the core CLR, I get that the Microsoft.NET Core application version 6, which is correct because I use C Sharp 6, uh, has a core CLR DLL in a different location. This is a clue to where the SOS needs to be located. So with that in mind, let's load the SOS. So load by SOS core CLR. What this does is that it will load the SOS from a different location. And what WinDebug does is that it picks the correct SOS for this particular memory dump. With all that, now we are ready to run analyze minus V. This command analyze minus V is so essential for debugging memory dumps that I find that using .NET dump all alone is insufficient because of the power of analyze minus V in just honing down to the exact exception that is occurring within the memory dump. Let's scroll up a bit to see the source of this um, memory dump. Now, this program uh, did not have a problem. It was waiting on a read line when I captured the memory dump. So the breakpoint that occurred over here is the only exception that occurred because that's how the tool actually captures a memory dump. It injects a breakpoint then it resumes the process and that creates the memory dump on disk. So it's exactly correct that the exception code is 8 and a 3 and it's a breakpoint because that's exactly what happened. But if I look down, I get a stack which is exactly the same as any other stack and I get all the commands and all the data as though this was a standard .NET Framework memory dump. .NET Core and .NET Framework are debugged the same way but the SOS tool is actually different between the two. So as long as you load the correct SOS, it's going to work. At this point, I also have access to all the other commands. Like I can use threads. Um, I can use uh, dump heap minus that. This is going to work as well. Uh, I can switch threads. Um, I can run PE. It's going to say there's no uh, exception, which is correct. Um, all the other commands work. I am not going to dive deep into this particular memory dump because I know exactly what happened. It was a read line and I captured the memory dump. But this is an illustration that .NET Core debugging is not that different. You just have to capture the memory dump using the .NET dump tool and then you can use WinDebug to debug it exactly the same. It is slightly different though if you run .NET on Linux or on a Mac. I will show in a future video how to use a different debugger to capture the dump and how to convert it so that you can then use a debugger with analyze minus V. But for this sample where I'm using Windows with C Sharp 6, uh, this will suffice for using WinDebug to debug a .NET Core dump. The key point to using WinDebug is to have the SOS plugin. Now, for some reason, if you don't have the SOS plugin on disk, there is a technique that you can actually install it using .NET uh, tools itself. What you can do is you can run this command over here, which is .NET tool install global, I'm going to install global again, .NET SOS. What this does is that it will download the .NET SOS that is needed to debug. This machine that I'm using has got the full C Sharp SDK for C Sharp 6. So SOS is already present on disk. But if you encounter a situation where you don't have the SDK on disk, you can just run .NET tool install global .NET SOS and you will get a copy of the SOS. It will download into a particular directory. You can then load the SOS directly from that directory and you can still use WinDebug to debug .NET Core memory dump. Generally though, it's much simpler to just take the .NET memory dump and just copy it to a computer that has the full SDK rather than download tools. But if you are in a situation where you don't really have a choice, go ahead, just download the .NET SOS and use it. It's identically the same as the version that is present within the .NET SDK itself. Because it is possible to install .NET runtime 
which does not have the SDK when running .NET Core applications. On computers with just the .NET runtime, you might not have the SOS if you run Windybug and say load SOS. It may not load because it's not on the disk. For those situations, you're supposed to use this command to download the SOS. Now, once you get Windybug to work properly, there are other commands you can run like .NET stack and .NET trace to aid in your debugging. These are additional tools. I thought that these tools were a bit too much to be put into one video. So I'll make another video after this using the auxiliary tools to help debug but these tools mostly overlap with what WinDebug could do. So I thought I'll make a separate video where you don't use WinDebug as the primary debugger, but rather you just use the .NET tools. That will be a bit more involved. So I'll make a dedicated video just for that. Just to keep the video short, I think I'll end it about here. I use WinDebug even with .NET Core all the time. I have never gotten used to just using the tools by itself, the .NET tools and the .NET dump. The only tool that I regularly use is .NET dump, just to capture the memory dump. But I use WinDebug and even Visual Studio all the time much more than using the native .NET Core tools to analyze memory dumps. Anyway, if you have actually debugged this way, let me know in the description below uh, what you did. Uh, let me know also how you manage to get the memory dump, especially for Linux and Mac, which is slightly different. I'll do another video after this in which I use Linux to capture the memory dump. It is a bit more involved and requires a bit more knowledge of other debuggers. So I thought I'll make a dedicated video just for that to not mix the content in with WinDebug. Anyway, gentle reminder to subscribe, hit that bell icon and give me a like if you like the content. It's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.